Public Affairs very much thanks Residco, our sole corporate underwriter, for helping to make the production of this show possible. Inflation under Trump was 7.8% cumulatively over four years, and right now under Biden, and he's not done, <laughs> unfortunately he's not finished, but it's up almost 20%. So, so it's more, it's about a triple of inflation. But I want to tell you something. I think it's much worse than that. Yeah, so my opponent Raja, as we talked about, did use a bull bully pulpit, but he was the opposite. He was, he of course gets a lot of money from the teachers unions. A lot of what my opponent and so many other politicians do is they do whatever the, the, their donors tell them to do. It's like strings attached to all that money. So anyway, he was, he was for that. He was for letting it lapse. He was essentially against school choice. I'm for competition. You name me one area where when you don't have competition, the service gets better. It doesn't exist. Maybe back in the old days, but we're in an economy now where competition drives innovation and drives uh, prices lower and drives quality up. And we do not have that, and we need it desperately. Iran cannot get a nuclear weapon. We're big Satan. They call Israel little Satan. They literally want to destroy us. And the, the feckless, upside-down policies that we have had on Iran and Hamas and Hezbollah is, is just, is, has the potential to be quite severe. So I'm all for not just supporting Israel, but doing whatever we have to do to stop the terrorism. That seems like a no-brainer. Over in uh, Russia, with uh, what we have there with Russia and Ukraine, uh, I'm no Putin fan, believe me, and I want to support Ukraine, and we have to guard against Russia you know, exerting their force wherever they want. We have to get that held in check. But at the same time, we have to do it in a, an intelligent and a principled way. You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name and politics is our game. And we will be doing lots of public policy and politics today because we have as our guest, Mark Rice. He is the Republican nominee in the 8th Congressional District. Mark, just get right to it. We'll get back and tell people more about you and your opponent as we get into the show. But for now, we've covered crime, we've covered illegal immigration. Big issue, number three, in the 8th Congressional District. Yeah, well, the economy, uh, you know, and I, I don't want to say it's one, two, and three, but there are three massive issues, and the economy now is affecting people like crazy. I mean... Everybody's now getting their property tax bills. If you got your property tax bill, you know what I'm talking about. It's out of control. Some people's tax bills are up as much as 50%. And these are people living paycheck to paycheck. They can't afford it. And, and again, they gaslight us. So it says, oh, well, there's no inflation. There's no problem. The economy is doing better than ever. Unemployment is low or some other What's happening nonsense. To inflation? What's the big picture on inflation? Again, Raja was there... Under, under Trump, yep. Raj has been there under Biden. Do you think he ever says to himself, well, what was inflation like when Trump was here? <laughs> What's inflation like He can't like say now? that. He'd you wanna, you he don't would, know what he's saying. He, he, would have, he would cry if he did. That inflation under Trump was 7.8% cumulatively over four years. And right now under Biden, and he's not done, <laughs> unfortunately he's not finished, but it's up almost 20%. So, so it's, more, it's about a triple of inflation. But I want to tell you something. I think it's much worse than that. Mm -hmm. I, if I go to the grocery store, the price of food, the price of a Coca-Cola is double. It's up 100%, at least for me. That's what I see. And, and, and anecdotally, though, food costs are up, say, 50%. Uh, a mortgage is up 100%. If you, if you want to buy your home and you have to borrow money to do it, which most people do, it's up more than doubled. Do you know that? Interest rates have more than doubled. So the cost is twice as much for the average you know, young person to buy their first home. It costs twice as much as it did when Trump was in office. Well, yeah. And we're talking about, oh, okay, inflation's up 3%. Well, give me a break. Inflation is killing people. It's crippling the economy. And what are we doing about that? Of course, we're doing the opposite. We're piling up debt for our children, and we're printing money to pay for it because the politicians get reelected by making people promises that they can give them whatever they want, and they just keep doing it. And it's not just COVID. It's anything and everything. It's messy foreign wars. It's money for all kinds of things that aren't necessary. A lot of this Green New Deal is really 
uh, um, it doesn't make any sense. I'm in the energy business and I can tell you it's really just a money-making scheme for people that, that are opportunists. And it's, again, we're all paying it for it in, through inflation. We can call it Biden inflation or we can call it a Biden tax or now a Harris tax. And they're telling us that things are great because of that when really people are mm. suffering. And the, the fact that they're blind to it is good for me because I'm going to win my election probably because they're not speaking to the issues. And we're talking about the issues every day while they're ignoring us, ignoring the issues and telling us that everything's wonderful when it's not. So you think people know... They know if they're in the 8th Congressional District, there are some things that are going up at 15%, 30% specific commodities. 15, yeah, sure. The yearly rate may during, uh, during Biden. Their electric bill, right? The, and the yearly rate during Biden may be 7%, 6%. You think people know that stuff? They can't not know it. Okay. That's the thing. The, 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 I say the Democrats have to run on the record and they're stuck with it. I, I get that. But what would be better for our country if they would just face it and try to make the changes necessary to do something about it. But instead, they're doubling down. And, and yeah, people, they, you know, they, they see their checking account. They know that they don't have as much money as they used to. They know that their salaries or their income isn't keeping up with inflation, and they don't have money. Some people are having to choose between food and health care. I mean, people are making serious uh, concessions to what's happened, and it's only happened to them because... We have bad leadership. We have a leadership that really doesn't care so much about us. They care about them. They care about getting reelected. They let me behind the curtain. I'm a regular guy. I'm not a politician. I see what they're doing. They're not about helping us. They're about helping themselves to make sure they get reelected, and they don't really care much about us. So you mentioned property taxes. Huh? And property taxes in large part are accounted for by education expenditures. Mm -hmm. It's locally financed in most cases, yep. right? Yep. So if you're going to have high education expenditures per capita... 30000 a kid, right? In Chicago, yep. it's probably, I'm sure it's higher in the, you know, the 8th Congressional District. Yep. It's higher there because suburban costs are usually, they spend more on education. And are they getting their money's worth in Chicago <laughs> or in the suburbs or even around the state of Illinois? Have you looked right. at this? Absolutely. Do people... Did people talk to you about the quality of education in their in the eighth congressional district in Chicago for kids learning how to read? Right. So, so it's interesting that you say that. Parents talk about it all the time because they are failing our kids. There's only depending on which suburb you're talking about or the city of Chicago, you're talking about only twenty percent of the kids that we're paying thirty thousand dollars each for uh, can read or write at grade level frankly, below 20%. So for instance, uh, Elgin, which is in my district, is, is below that. There's a lot of places that are below that. But, but try to wrap your head around this, guys. Think about what I'm saying. Basically, 10 to 20% of the kids that we're paying to educate can even read and write at their level. And we're paying a lot. We're paying 30,000 or even more per capita for these kids. So the schools aren't just uh, doing a bad job, they are getting an F minus. I mean, it's true, 20, 10, 20% of the kids are at least reading at grade level, but what about the 80, 90% of the kids that aren't? And so this is a terrible situation. And what did our state do about it? They took away the competition. They took away the ability of giving scholarships to kids who go to private schools, because that's competing with public schools and the teachers union. And the, and the lobby, which is so very powerful in this state. So we have terrible education. It needs to be approved on so many levels. The federal government can play a big role in that if they want to. They don't have the appetite for that because, frankly, we aren't talking about it enough. So thank you for asking that. We should talk about it a lot. So you're, you're an advocate of school choice, for school absolutely, choice. <clears throat> absolutely. If kids are in a failing public school, then what? What, what would you say the kids ought to be allowed the to do? The same thing with Kim Fox. They should be fired. That's another thing. All these teachers, they have jobs for life, and they, they, they're starting well, to make who, ridiculous who amounts of money while they're what, failing what, what, our it, children. If you had school choice, would the parents have the ability to take their kids and go to the school of their choice? They, they, they do, the and they did. They, kind of they, there was a tax credit, right. which our government, in their wisdom, mostly Democrat state wisdom, right. the state government, uh, let it lapse, so they'll essentially let the uh, the tax, the state tax, Illinois state tax credit go away. So now they don't have the the finances, so the money here, to do it. You would, even though that's a state issue, 
you would have been using your bully pulpit to my, support my opponent that, did that use, right of school choice. Yeah, so my opponent, Raja, as we talked about, did use a bull, bully pulpit, but he was the opposite. He was... He, of course, gets a lot of money from the teachers' unions. A lot of what my opponent and so many other politicians do is they do whatever the, the, their donors tell them to do. It's like strings attached to all that money. So anyway, he was, he was for that. He was for letting it lapse. He was essentially against school choice. I'm for competition. You'd name me one area where when you don't have competition, the service gets better. It doesn't exist. Maybe back in the old days, but we're in an economy now where competition drives innovation and drives uh, prices lower and drives quality up. And we do not have that, and we need it desperately. So, I mean, we've, we've covered a lot. We've covered illegal immigration. We've covered inflation. We've covered education. We've covered yeah. crime. And people are probably sitting there, if they're watching this in, their eighth, in the 8th Congressional District, they're, they're kind of wondering, well, could this guy really change this stuff, right, okay? Right, Because those are big national issues. Right. You'd be one congressman out of 435, right? That's true. Could you change? Could you do something? Right. Well, I, I, I don't, I'm not arrogant enough to think I could change everything all at once. But I'm a business guy, and I also have done things in the nonprofit world. And I like my, in fact, I'll tell you, my, my Hebrew name, I'm a Jewish guy, is Mayor, which means shine light into the darkness. Okay. And I like shining light into the darkness and then making that change. And it doesn't happen overnight. I'm not a BSer like all these politicians are. I'm being honest. You can do it one, just like you make a watch, one piece at a time. And there's a lot of low-hanging fruit that we can do with the border, with inflation, with uh, uh, corruption, which we haven't even talked about in terms of uh, turning that around. And, of course, with, uh, with crime, there's so much that we can do right away to make things better. Like the border issue, we can solve that, like Trump says, in a matter of a, a couple of weeks. It's remarkable what we could do to shut down the flow and then deal with what we've got already you, here. You in the, in the House would have to do as much as you can, working with other Republicans and Democrats, yep. to change those policies, yep. right? Yep, yep, yep. And I talk to them all the time now. I go to D.C., which I don't like. It's such a cesspool there, but I'm going to go there and I'm going to work with those people to make that change. And unfortunately, right now, we have a divided Congress. Our, you know, uh, the Senate is Democrat, the Congress is Republican, just by a couple of votes. And what I hope to do is flip a district. The district, the 8th district, is what we call purple. It's not really blue, it's not really red, but right now it's blue. If I win, that's one more seat for the Republicans. And let's not talk about Republicans and Democrats. I want to serve everybody. But we do need to sort of get off this progressive, socialist, liberal way of viewing things, we know it's not working. It's broken. It needs to be fixed. And we can fix the border, and we can fix crime, and we can fix inflation just by being responsible stewards of the greatest country on earth, the greatest country that's ever existed. And I see it all going away, and it doesn't have to, but we've all got to do something. And so I'm one of these guys. I decide to run. Not everybody can run, but everybody can vote, or they can call their neighbor, or they can knock on a door, We've all got to talk about these issues and really deal with them, not avoid them, not kick the can down the road for our children, or our grandchildren, but deal with them and take charge and make a difference. Okay, we got to get out. I just want to, I want to whet people's appetite. Okay. We've only focused on domestic policy, haven't done foreign policy. Yeah, I'd love to. You can't spend a lot of time on it, but in okay. a minute or two, yeah. what do you do with the two major wars that are going on, Ukraine and Russia, Israel and Hamas? What do you, where do you stand in terms of projecting strength, but on the other hand, not spending money forever, 20-year yeah. wars? So I advocate through peace, through strength, and not to go spend a lot of time on it here, Jeff, but we wouldn't have these problems if we had a strong president and we had resolve. And basically by withdrawing from Afghanistan the way we did and letting our precious soldiers get murdered and leaving all that material and, and, uh, and ammunition for our enemies. That started us down this path where the whole world laughs at us and does not respect us. And that's why Putin is running over Ukraine. And that's why Hamas, so really Iran, because Hamas and Hezbollah are just proxies for Iran. But these countries that are our enemies, and China's next with Taiwan, but they feel emboldened to do whatever they want. They're not worried about us because, frankly, we have weak leadership in the White House. 
I think that will be changed come November and then in January when we all take office. And, and in terms of what I can do is we're pregnant with those things. They're, they're happening. Iran cannot get a nuclear weapon. We're big Satan. They call Israel little Satan. They literally want to destroy us. And the, the feckless upside down policies that we have had on Iran and Hamas and Hezbollah is, is just, is, has the potential to be quite severe. So I'm all for not just supporting Israel, but doing whatever we have to do to stop the terrorism. That seems like a no brainer. Over in uh, Russia, with uh, what we have there with Russia and Ukraine, uh, I'm no Putin fan, believe me, and I want to support Ukraine, and we have to guard against Russia you know, exerting their force wherever they want. We have to get that held in check. But at the same time, we have to do it in a, an intelligent and a principled way. We don't, shouldn't have just a blank check available for people that we're not sure where that money is going. So I would be all for auditing and making sure that that money is in fact going where it needs to go and that we make sure that it's not one of these endless wars that we're just going to finance forever. And who benefits, by the way? It's the military industrial complex because they're selling more weapons. And I'm very suspicious that we have people in our country who don't share our interests. They, they like these, these endless wars going on. So we need to put a stop to that and the way that those people can buy influence over our political leaders, which then make votes, which make them money. It's all this terrible, vicious cycle. And I think all that can be changed relatively quickly. And it's something that the U.S. Congress can do. And I would like to help lead that effort. All right. Thank you so much, Mark Rice, Republican nominee in the 8th Congressional District. Come back soon. Come back often. I've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. And you come back next week and every week to Public Affairs. <laughs>